Three-time national champ, Urban Meyer. I can remember when he was coaching at Utah, and I used to cover the Oregon Ducks, and I would tell my friends, whoever this Urban Meyer guy is, he is working the Pac-12. I think he beat Cal one year, and he beat Oregon, and they were good teams with good coaches like Jeff Tedford and Mike Bellotti. And I remember telling people, I'm like, this guy, you watch these games, he is working these staffs. Urban went on to win a couple of national titles with the Gators in Florida, who are really good this year with Dan Mullen, and he won at Ohio State. And I always love this stat. He's one of three coaches to lead multiple schools to a title. Nick Saban, Urban Meyer, and Pop Warner. If you're ever in a category with Pop Warner, you've had a great career. And Urban's now joining me live, Fox College Football. So uh, let's start with this, Coach. Urban, um, I, I said I thought Ohio State deserved to be in. It wasn't their fault for a couple of the cancellations. The Big Ten was willing to evolve and adapt. Were you surprised the conference did adapt because they could have easily not done that. Well, the Big Ten, they came out very rigid when they, remember when the commissioner said that we would not revisit playing. They did revisit and they're playing. Then all of a sudden you have that 21-day rule for the uh, athletes when the other conferences had 10 days for the COVID, uh, people that caught COVID. And then the six the six game rule, you know, I think that showed great flexibility and, and conversation among the Big Ten conference. You know, if there was not a head-to-head -head, this would be a problem. But there was a head-to-head, -head and they beat Indiana. So Indiana played two more games. I'll tell you what, Colin, my heart, all of our hearts go out to Indiana. That team was a special team. They beat Michigan State, the Wolverines, and Penn State in three weeks in a row. And now this would be the year they could have a chance to go compete for a championship, and they won't have it. Yeah. You know, Justin Fields, um, you know, there's been three quarterbacks since I've been a sportscaster that I've said you have to pick number one. John Elway, Andrew Luck, and Trevor Lawrence just feel different to me. Now, Justin Fields is really good, and in any other year, I'd have him number one. He'll probably be the second quarterback taken. My question is this. Beyond me watching games, tell me about Justin Fields that I don't see and don't know. Well, I think when you start talking about franchise quarterbacks or picks, it's got to be more than just the ability to play. It's got to be... Can he be a leader in the locker room? Because that, that will never change, that position he has to lead. What I noticed about Justin Fields, especially during his difficult season, he, his leadership skills are, I didn't know that. I'm not sure Ryan Day and Corey Dennis, who recruited him, knew it. But he's taken over the locker room. He's a great leader. He's a great worker. So that's what I think people see, a guy that's Braxton Miller fast, Dwayne Haskins accurate. Yet what they don't see is incredible leadership and character, and that's what's really important, especially if you're going to sink that kind of money and investment in a player. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, we, we talk about college football, and I've said this before. Brian Kelly has gotten Notre Dame back to a place I never thought they'd get back to, and I, and I didn't. I said they have an academically. I think it's kind of a town. It's small. It's isolated. There's a religious overtone. And I said this for I've said this for 15 years. Like eight wins, nine wins. That's that's great for Notre Dame. And stop ripping the coaches. Brian Kelly has got them now, as you all know on the recruiting trail. That's a real football program. And I'd put him in the top five or six in the country. I, I want you to talk a little bit about Brian Kelly, what you know, and because I really think they this this year I absolutely believe Ohio State, Notre Dame, Clemson, Bama are the four best teams I and I think they could all give each other good games. Are you a little surprised? You know Notre Dame well. You used to be there. That with, with the, some of their barriers, they have become a top four to five program. I know Brian Kelly very well. And, and what I, I've always appreciated the coaches that have won at all levels. And you're talking about Grand Valley Straight, Central Michigan, and then to Cincinnati, and then to Notre Dame, and he's a winner. You know, that's, this is not shocking that he's doing this at Notre Dame. I think he's one of the most underrated coaches in the country. Is Notre Dame at times a tough sell? It is. At other times, it's an actually easy sell because certain kids have grown up. And, you know, the Catholic schools, you got an instant. You know, that's where a lot of great football is played in some Catholic high schools across America. So he's got a built-in advantage. But for the most part, you have to go out and work people. He does not have a backyard. You know, these other programs, Ohio has Ohio. Texas has Texas. California has, you know, UCLA and USCF, California. Indiana high school football is good but the quantity is not there. So he's a national recruiter. So uh, I've always been a fan of Brian Kelly. I've coached against him a couple of times. And uh, I just think he's one of the best, you know, one of the top five coaches in the country. 
You know, it's interesting. Your name comes up all the time, and I, and I have said this, and I'm sure you through the grapevine you hear this eventually, but I've, but I've said this before. Uh, if there was an NFL job open, I, I've said this before. If I was the Jets, I'd go hire you. You'd be who I'd hire with the Jets. I've said this USC and Texas. If, if they had openings, I'd be like, that's the guy I'd hire, Urban Meyer. You've had physical things you and I have discussed. Is it Bob Stoops has told me privately and publicly, I'm done coaching. And then he goes back to the XFL because there's an itch. There's, a, there's nothing like game day. There's just nothing like changing lives of young people. Can you definitively say, I'm done with coaching forever? Or do you, are there mornings you wake up on Saturday, Urban, and you could just, you want to be in that stadium? There's more than mornings, Colin. You can't do something as long as I've done it that you just feel a little bit empty. I have a great spot on Fox, and I love Reggie, Matt, Brady, and Rob Stone. We have a great group. I really have uh, absorbed that and embraced it. But to say I don't think about it, it's every day. Uh, but it'd have to be the perfect, perfect situation. It'd have to be something that I was confident that the health issues I could overcome and at least uh, prevent. So, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, at this point, you know, I think I'm done, but I've learned a long time ago, you know, I left a job once where I thought I really plan on being here. Then you get a phone call from a better opportunity. So, you know, I, I think I'm done, but I, I would never say I'm never done. Yeah. You know, it, it is interesting. In college, Brian Kelly told me two weeks ago on the air, he goes, the one thing I like about it, he goes, unless your name is Belichick or Andy Reid, you can't control your personnel. And in college, you can control your personnel. Um, one of the things that makes you special is you really like changing lives. It's a big deal for you. You take people, you mold them. Professional football is almost a different platform. You know, they've had parenting, they've had coaching. Is, is the pro football world to you I always thought you looked at it from afar, but, but as you're now out of football, how do you view the NFL coaching jobs? How do you view them? Strange, interesting, or uh, a billionaire you wouldn't want to deal with? You know, I've, I had unique experiences. I've, I've been a part of all the, all the NFL teams' franchises in some way. How? Because they've come through my office and, and looked at our players, and a lot of them drafted our players. So last year was the first time I called a good chunk of our players that are currently playing in the NFL. And I was so intrigued about why is this organization really struggling and then why is this one, you know, the New Orleans Saints. I, I think we have five players there right now. I was so intrigued because I've known Sean Payton for 20 years. And Mike Vrabel, what makes Mike Vrabel's, you know, such a good coach in the NFL? So I've got a little bit of a grasp on it now. I never really did. I never have time. But it always, you know, I don't want to be so simple. It comes down to culture and leadership. And if you have control of an organization where you can build a culture, the most perfect example is Bill Belichick. He has built a culture there of excellence. Other places have not because it's been a re revolving door, and really they have not put a premium on, on that, in my opinion. And it's a very strong opinion because I've witnessed it through my former players. So I've studied it, and uh, uh, I, I think it comes down to, I don't, you know, I, I get a little tired when you say, well, the NFL college, and, you know, I think whether it's a, uh, Corporate America, whether it's a great professional organization or a great college team, alignment, culture, and leadership are essential. By the way, that's either your office or Ohio State. Tell the people where you're at. Yeah, Fox put this studio in, and I, they kind of put it behind. Uh, I noticed I didn't even see what's back there. There's some balls from Utah, and <laughs> yeah, I'm at my, my home in Columbus. Okay, home in Columbus. There you go. Urban Meyer, great talking to you, Coach. Great seeing you, Colin. All right, college football analyst. He's been terrific. He's gone all in on it, by the way. He's one of these guys, when Urban's into something, he's into something. I tell a story years ago. I was told this, not by Urban, by somebody else. So when Urban, uh, he'd gone to uh, Utah and Bowling Green, um, Bowling Green first, Juan, went to Utah, and then he was up. He went to Florida. But Notre Dame and Florida were both interested. And Lou Holtz may deny this, but he called Lou Holtz because he had been on Lou Holtz's staff. So Urban was the young star coach on Lou, one of Lou Holtz's staffs, and he called uh, Lou Holtz, and he said, well, wh wh where should I go? And I, I don't think I've ever told Urban this, and, and, but I heard this story, is that Lou, H Lou Holtz said, go to Florida. <laughs> he says you can just get more players. Like, this is all about talent accumulation. At Florida, <clears throat> you'll have a, a – I, I think your recruiting will be better at Florida, and therefore you'll have more to work with at Florida. And that wasn't Lou – being anti-Notre Dame, it was the reality of Notre Dame. As, as Lou lived through his Notre Dame experience, uh, 
toward the end with Lou, he had fought with administration to get certain kids in. And uh, so it's uh, but I'll, I'll tell you on Brian Kelly, it, it's like Urban said, there's a lot of roadblocks. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. It is cold. It is isolated. There's not much to do. Academic load is tough. There's a religious overtone, but it's also Jesuit high school football in America is wildly powerful. And that's the first place you look. So it's a little both. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.